Hello, my name is Archibald Chesterfield III. I'm a YouTube entertainer and celebrity, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hello, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury channel. And this is a, uh, a paid review I'm doing for Aiden. Dear Mr. Chesterfield, remember, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. Look in the description for 10 ways you can help me stay full-time on YouTube. Wistwatch check, IWC, IWC Ingenua fuckers. I am a 21-year-old business student living in Melbourne and I won't graduate from uni for another two years and I've been working part-time while studying full-time. I currently own a Seiko SNEK87J which I bought as my first automatic watch for under a hundred bucks. I wear this on a decent calf leather strap and enjoy it for what it is. This has been my most frequently worn watch for the past few years since catching the watch bug after high school. The simple black dial and 36mm case remind me of the Rolex Explorer 1 14270, which is the watch I've been lusting after for over two years. I also own an $11 Casio F91W to wear at the gym. Stopwatch comes in handy and I don't care if I dropped a dumbbell on it. And a secondhand gold tone Casio World Time. I wear this on occasion to m make me smile and help me imagine what it would be like to own my grail watch, the Rolex Date 8 President in yellow gold. I am under no illusion about the quality of my watches and what make the pontiff and what the pontiff thinks of them. I narrowly escaped the sinkhole of Shitterdom earlier this year. I purchased a Seiko SRP775K online for about $340 from memory. This gigantic soulless watch made me realize what would happen to me if I didn't bite the bullet and purchase a Rolex. I got easily bored with the thing which satisfied the watch craving for two weeks. I knew that if I continued to buy shitters, I'd end up, end up a familiar story, like so many who have featured on the Archie Luxury program over the years. The moment of clarity came when I was about to purchase a Seiko SRB035 online. At that moment, I got straight on Gumtree and flogged off the SRP775 to some punter for $250. So now I have a dilemma, Archie. I want a Rolex, but considering I make next to nothing, I can't afford to make the wrong decision. I am a one-watch person, so the watch I decide on will be my only watch until I get the president as an old geezer. I like traditional sizes as I'm a traditional man. Anything over 36 mil, unless it's a diver, <coughs> chronograph, which I'm not interested in, although I do appreciate them, is too big. And it must be Rolex because of the high grade steel, movements, value retention and oyster case. As mentioned, the Rolex Explorer 1 114270 is my preference because of its versatility, stealth, and longevity. The 114270 can be worn to the beach or skiing, all the way the scale of formality, failing just shy of black tie, in which case I wouldn't wear a watch at all because of its unassuming design and hidden coronet underneath the 12 o'clock position. It is unlikely to set off the tall poppy syndrome of so many Australians in the workplace, particularly as a young man under the age of 30 in what will likely be a graduate position. 
What watch will suit me in all aspects of my life and leave me perfectly satisfied until I make a decision to sell or hand down the piece and step up to solid gold in my 30s or 40s or 50s, whenever I achieve something worth enough of such a reward. The reason that this is a tough decision is because it will piss off my parents because they believe forking out Five and a half thousand on a watch at my age is foolish. They have also said that they would be willing to go halves on one when I graduate and want me to wait until then. I am itching for Rolex Arch. I don't know if I can hold out till then. I also fear that the 36mm Explorers will become increasingly popular and the price will shoot up as people get sick of the 30mm, 39mm size. This is still a good deal. Wait two years and get a 114270 for maximum 3000 out of pocket. In the meantime, if I can restrain myself, I can open a share portfolio and start collecting assets. The other option is to pull the trigger on a Rolex now. The other model I adore is the Air King 5500 and the 14000 and its variants. Although older and arguably not as good, the 5500 with its cleaner dial, owing to the absence of the half second indices, would be my preference. But at the end of the day, I don't really, I don't really care ab about little things like that because they are all Rolex. A white or black dial, Air King would be pretty much meet all the criteria of the Explorer and I don't care about the 34mm size. And I could buy it and my family wouldn't know how much it cost. I could tell them it was 1500 and they'd, believe me, not crack it up. According to Chrono24, it would set me back 3000 for a good one, which, still, which would still give me money to invest and my watch itch would be permanently scratched. Please let me know what you think as your advice on such matters is valued greatly. Thank you for your time and service. Yours faithfully, Aiden. P.S. If you ever feel the need to put this on your channel although i'm not asking you to do so please do not use my name for obvious reasons fifteen dollars sent to your paypal aiden uh, can we just use your first name aiden aiden's not anything unique now let, let's have a talk about this i know exactly where you're coming from <coughs> 21 year old student you're itching itching out the bit to get a decent watch and Aiden, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, my best advice to you would be to wait for the Explorer 1. Now, believe you me, believe you me, they definitely are not, they definitely are not going to become scarce and they're not going to go through the roof. If anything, the 36 mils, I think, will become cheaper because for most people, they are considered a bit small. It's funny, you know, my first Rolex, I said to a, uh, a jeweler client of mine, get me the cheapest Rolex you can. I was expecting an Air King. And I got an Explorer 1. A 1016 Explorer 1. The last of the last. And I got to tell you the truth there, Aiden. Don't be in a hurry. <coughs> Believe you me, I've been there. Rolex makes 1 million watches per year. The amount of Explorer 1s out in the marketplace, by all means, you will get one very easily. So my advice to you, don't, don't, whatever you do, Aiden, don't get a compromise. And I got to say, I'm a bit like you too. I've always, you know, I, I, chomping at the bit, I really wanted it really, really badly. And looking back, I've made some really dumb decisions. I really wanted a Royal Oak. I wanted a steel automatic Royal Oak. So I, I saved and saved and I, I actually I didn't I didn't couldn't get anywhere. So I used a credit card and bought a 14790ST. And I remember, you know, I just wanted it. And the truth is I got it. It was okay, but then it had a mechanical fault. I end up spending, you know, if I would have being a bit more sensible, I could have got a better model like a 15300, which was a bigger version. And <laughs> it would be younger and a lot better piece. But I was in a hurry. I just wanted a Royal Oak AP automatic in steel. So I really 
was silly. Now, I gotta tell you, please, my advice to you is slow down. Don't rush out there. Slow down. Now, I, I gotta tell you, you can get, there is a, a Rolex 6694, a Rolex Oyster Date. Maybe you can get one of those for low, you know, you can get one of those on a strap under, you know, they're quite, quite inexpensive. That's probably the least expensive piece you can get there. I'll email you privately. I've got a friend who buys and sells watches overseas. He, he's always got stocks of oyster dates. You get one under 2000 you know, with a bracelet. So <coughs> that could be a way to go. It's manual wind. And the thing is, when you want to get rid of it, when you want to trade up to the Rolex Explorer, you'll get most of your money back. So that's, that's if you are going to if you are going to go there, I'd say get a Rolex Oyster Date. Now, I've been there. I've been there. You know, sometimes I can give you the wisdom. I can tell you, no, don't do that. You're a 21-year-old man. It'll come soon enough. You'll get the Explorer one. But when, it's in, when you're in your shoes, I've been an impatient fucker as well. But i got to tell you, I honestly think the Rolex Explorer one, the 36 mil is absolutely perfect for you. That is an absolutely perfect watch. It's perfect because it is under the radar. It's a sports watch, but it's a dress watch. It is absolutely perfect. I can't think of a better watch. And as far as the day date goes, I tell you what, I wouldn't be getting rid of the Explorer 1 because the day date being solid gold, it's not something you really want to wear every day. It's not that sort of watch so i would i would have both those watches in fact i've got a fellow archie luxury fan who has a explorer one one four two seven zero and a day date 36 mil day date and i gotta tell you that is a really cool combo deal to have so um yeah i gotta say to you in all honesty my advice to you get an Explorer one. I I would probably get in touch with some dealers. You can get them a bit cheaper than that. You know, a bit cheaper than instead of getting the one one four two seven zero. Why don't you get the one four two seven zero? A mid nineties. Get a mid nineties one of those. That you can get those a little bit cheaper. And that they are a magic watch. They are absolutely fantastic. I would myself. Um, I, I would really say to you, hold out for the Explorer 1, okay? Because you can rush it, get a compromise, and it's, you know, you're going to pay too much for a shitty one when you've got to really get one that's really cool. So my advice to you would be to wait. It's, it's a year or two is nothing in the scheme of things for a young buck like you. But to you, it's 10% of your life. So it's a long time, but to an older guy like me, middle-aged Archie, you think, ah, oh, just wait. I can tell you now, don't get a compromise. I So many things I bought because they were cheap. I bought them because they were cheap, and fuck did I regret it. I regretted buying them. And sometimes, you know, it's like when I bought my Calatrava paddock. That was very expensive, but I got it because I loved it, and I sold it for really good money. When I bought my yellow gold world time, that was fucking expensive. That was really expensive, but <coughs> it was it's a really cool watch. So I got to tell you, you know, recently I did a trade deal to get this, this IWC, which is a really hefty big fucker. And I got to say, you got to buy things that you like. Don't go for the cheapest model because you'll never really be happy. When you go for the compromise, you're really never happy. It's always a compromise. So my advice to you is slow down. Enjoy the Seikos you've got at the moment. Take your parents up on the offer. Get in touch with some of the dealers. You're in Melbourne, I think you told me. 
some great dealers in Melbourne. Um, and I would, I would seriously, I would seriously get an Explorer one. That is just such a cool watch. It's a lifetime keeper. So, um, I, I, that's what I seriously think the best thing is. Now, at the end of the day, your parents will always tell you, oh, that's silly. And to an outside person, of course it is. This is what life is like. I mean, <coughs> life is silly. We all, but if you look at it this way and say, okay, I'm going to get myself a really nice Rolex, but that means I don't have to have super expensive clothing. I can just go with modest clothing. I don't need to have a fancy wancy car. My thing is the watches. And I think out of all the things you could waste money on, like a car, fancy clothing, buying the wristwatch, a good quality wristwatch, really won't be that bad. It, it is a great thing to buy and to behold. So my advice to you is to not compromise. Get the Explorer 1. Get the Explorer 1. Love it. Enjoy it. And I, I would seriously say to you, uh, just, just hold out a bit longer. Just look, you know, it, it'll, 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 it'll all come to place. Don't, don't. I would prefer you not to do a compromise. Don't do a compromise. But if you are going to compromise, <coughs> I would get a Rolex Oyster Date, thirty-four mil. Uh, I'll, I'll email you about it, and uh, my friend. Um, he could look after you. So um, that's my advice. Personally, I'd try and hold out. I know what it's like. I have been there. I've been there. It's it's fucking hard. I got to tell you, it is hard. It is very hard indeed. And I know where you're coming from. I know. I've fucking been there. Fuck. Have I been there? Let me let me give you the drum. I've been there. So my advice: hold out. Hold out, and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. The Explorer 1 is just the most... I reckon that 36 mil is so perfect. It is absolutely perfect. I'm Archie Luxury, wishing Aiden well. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. <laughs>